Richardson, Sean Locke, Joe Brand, Vic Reeves, Adam Buxton, Susie Dent, and Rachel Riley. Now, I'm your host, Jimmy. To Edit of Ten Cats does countdown, a show all about letters, numbers, and conundrums. Did you know, for example, a group of crows is known as a murder, a group of ravens is known as an unkindness, and a group of countdown fans is a nursing home? <laughs> <laughs> the word avocado comes from an old Indian word meaning testicle. It's used in phrases such as, don't neglect the avocados. <laughs> A popular colloquial phrase is, there's more than one way to skin a cat. That might be true, but there's only one way to stick a lit firework up its ass. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> OK, let's meet tonight's players. First up, it's Sean Locke. <laughs> Sean is a sex symbol, and that symbol is proceed with caution. <laughs> and joining Sean tonight is Joe Brand. <laughs> Joe used to be a psychiatric nurse, so not only will she be playing Countdown tonight, but hopefully she'll be able to diagnose whatever's wrong with John. <laughs> <laughs> Up against them this evening is John Richardson. <laughs> John says his new girlfriend takes his breath away, and that's because she's inflatable. <laughs> <laughs> and John's teammate, Vic Reeves. <laughs> Vic Reeves is famously half of the double act Reeves and Mortimer. If you've not seen them before, they're like Ant and Deck if Ant and Deck had discovered ketamine. <laughs> uh, Vic, this is your first time playing Countdown competitively. Yes. Are you better on the letters or the numbers? What, what would you say? Probably the letters, because I've, I've got probably about a hundred words in my vocabulary. <laughs> about a hundred? Ninety percent, of course, but most of them are all right. <laughs> Numbers, I'm terrible with. Okay. But do you know what I don't get, Jim? What don't you get? You go and see a band, one of these, uh, you know, young groups, jingle jangle with the long hair and that. Right, yeah. They say, yeah. here's a number that you haven't heard before, and I think, I've heard all the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> See, what, man, you can't tell me that you, you long-haired jingle janglers have got a new number that I haven't heard about. <laughs> and then they go, here we go, one, two, three, four. I say, I've heard all them. <laughs> John, some people might call you a geek for being so good at Countdown. What would you say to those people? Well, I don't know if you know this, Jimmy, but the word geek comes from German and it actually means a fool. So I'd say anyone who criticises me for being good at something and then calls me a fool, I'd say the joke was on them. <laughs> <laughs> that usually shuts them up. I think they're just bored and they've wandered off, John. <laughs> Still a victory. <laughs> Now, I don't want to bring back uh, painful memories, but last time you were up against Sean and Joe, you lost. I mean, you were, you were beaten comprehensively. Are you worried? <clears throat> oh, yeah, but not about this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you worried about leaving the gas on again? Well, I mean, there's a girlfriend at home now. Every minute I spend in the countdown studio is a minute she could be finding the keys. <laughs> Uh, Joe, you've been on Countdown, what, 84 times? Uh, yeah. You were also, you were named uh, Britain's Brightest Celebrity. Did I have any chance against you what, this evening? What, uh, oh, who was I named Britain's Brightest Celebrity by? Possibly I think it was my by... mum, was it? <laughs> I think it might have been Anne Robinson off of Test the Nation. I cheated in Test the Nation. <laughs> did you? Yeah. We all cheated. How did you cheat? We told each other the answers. <laughs> Has, has Countdown opened up a whole new fan base for you, Sean? Well, yes. I've, I've got a whole new demographic. The pedantic <laughs> are tuning in and, and, uh, and coming to see me now. And I have to be very careful where I put apostrophes on my DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what they were. I thought they were sort of a garnish for lamb. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, mascots this evening. Um, Sean, have you got a mascot? Well, I don't have got a mascot, Jimmy, because they never work. So I thought I'd use this part of the show as an opportunity to promote a product which I'm very excited about. Oh, go on. Uh, a young guy, a young entrepreneur, got in touch with me about this. 
And um, <laughs> he asked me, he asked me to promote it. You know, he's, he basically came to me and he said, um, look... Uh, we, we, before you go any further, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you've seen what uh, George Clooney did for Nespresso. I think you can do the same. <laughs> I think you could do the same for the mobile uh, condiment delivery system. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're out somewhere and you buy a burger or a hot dog, for example. Yeah, delicious, yeah. And then you go to the sauce counter and it's disgusting. The bottles are all congealed. Icky, yeah. And sometimes they've run out and then oh. you're just squeezing sort of yellow water onto your thing. It's a problem. Well, that problem's immediately solved. I mean, I'll <laughs> give you an example of it now. Um... <laughs> I'm going to offer Susie a, a hot dog. Susie, would you like a hot dog? There we go. Uh, yep. uh, would you like a hot dog? Of course. Thank you. Who, who would, would you like um, some uh, ketchup on that? <laughs> um, I'd love some ketchup. See, then I just do that, and it's expertly delivered. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm there. And then, would you like a bit of, a bit of mustard? A bit, bit of mustard yes, on that? Yes, yeah, please. Was, a bit of mustard on well, there. I've never felt peckish and aroused at the same time. <laughs> there we go, a bit of mustard. There we go, that's a Thanks. perfectly garnished hot dog. And then you can just get on with whatever you need to do. You're, you haven't got involved in the scrum around the uh, condiment area. <laughs> I liked it when you dropped a hip there at the end. <laughs> that really sold it for me. <laughs> Can I ask about the dials on the side, Sean? There seem to be some dials on the side. I well, this is, these don't work yet. <laughs> they're, they're prototypes. That's, um, this is months of the year. Right. The idea is that if you say, for example, you switch it to December, you've got bread sauce and cranberry sauce there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we're going to get one with hummus, but you need compressed air, so you'll have to have a, a tank on your back. <laughs> Joe, do you have a mascot? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be helping you through this evening, will it? Yeah. Brings you good luck. Yeah. <laughs> do you want some ketchup on it? <laughs> uh, Vic, have you got a mascot? Uh, yeah. What have you got? I've brought my teeth with me. <laughs> <laughs> I bought these up, um... <laughs> Did you buy them off? Bruce Forsyth, before he went insane. <laughs> <laughs> he sold you his teeth before he went insane. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go insane soon, so... <laughs> that's some use for me. <laughs> OK. John, have you got a mascot? Uh, well, yeah, Channel 4 have asked me to help bring a younger generation back into the show, which, obviously, what young people like is innuendo. Uh, so they've given me... Uh, this is my mascot for today. Uh, that's two large baps. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want ketchup on them? <laughs> <laughs> and they've given me this, which is uh, my innuendo horn, and if at any point people say something that's an innuendo, I have to uh, give them the horn. <laughs> <laughs> During the evening, you could give me the horn. <laughs> I'm going to put some, uh, some stuff on this sausage. <laughs> oh. I think it doesn't work if you're literally putting stuff on a yeah. sausage. I think the reason a lot of people don't take me up <laughs> is the expression I pull when I'm doing it. <laughs> is two enough of a choice? I mean, you've got a third outlet down there you could make. Yeah. <laughs> okay, over in Dictionary Corner, it's Adam Buxton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello. Adam currently lives in Norfolk, and if you don't know where Norfolk is, you can find it on a calendar halfway between 1940 and 1975. <laughs> <laughs> and now you spend a lot of time, you've been sort of famous for finding interesting things on the internet over the years. Are there any interesting words and phrases particular to it? Uh... I like the acronym YOLO, or YOLO, yep. which I think stands for You Obviously Like Oranges. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, are you careful with your language? You've got kids of your own. Are you yep. careful about swearing and stuff in front of them? Or... 
language-wise, I'm fairly liberal. I try to avoid Klingon. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them to grow up to be, you know, dicks. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's fine, you know. Uh, I don't mind what, right. the, what the little bastards say. <laughs> OK. And with Adam, of course, is Susie Dent. <clears throat> yeah. Susie is a lexicographer. What she says, she's a lexicographer. I suspect she just wants to be left alone at parties. <laughs> now, Susie, is it exciting when you discover a new word? Uh, yes. On The Real Show, I've moved to a laptop quite recently, and uh, Jay, our lovely floor manager, delights in every time we go off for a break I come back and he's looked up a new word for me and so I discovered about five new words a day and my favorite one that he found was anitidophobia which is the fear that somehow somewhere you were being watched by a duck <laughs> okay and in charge of the numbers it's Rachel Riley So, Rachel, looking around you um, here, do you think any of us have got the potential to be a maths genius? Um, well, typically, proper maths geniuses, they're quite young. They're often guys. They're often loners. Often not very good social skills. So, <laughs> um, <a> John. <laughs> I wonder where this is going. <laughs> so, no, no, definitely no one around here. <laughs> if you weren't on Countdown, what would be your perfect job? Um, well, I love animals, so I'd be doing something with animals, probably. Cats or dogs. I mean, oh. there's a place, um, in South End. <laughs> there's a place, um... There's a place in South End, a cat hotel, that my cats have gone to called the Pussy Palace. <laughs> There's only so much in there. You know what I mean? There's a place called the what, sorry? The Pussy Palace. And you'd like to work at the Pussy Palace? I... <laughs> <laughs> OK, tonight the prize the teams will be competing for is this, the Countdown Drum Kit. <laughs> Take it away, Ringo. Incredible looks, ladies. No rhythm. <laughs> OK, let's count down, everyone. Uh, time for the first game. Sean and Joe, you're first to pick the letters. Uh, consonant, please. Consonant. Thanks, Sean. N. Vowel, please. Thank you, Joe. I was going to say, that'll do me. E. <laughs> <laughs> and another one. I. Consonant, please. X. Oh. And another one, please. L. Uh, vowel, please. U. Jesus. <laughs> consonant, please. M. Um, consonant, please. N. Another consonant for a laugh. <laughs> Let's get this party started. Yeah. D. OK. And for the first time today, here's the countdown clock. So how many did you get, John? Five. Five. Vic? I've got none. <laughs> none. I'm really trying hard. None at all. Oh, okay. I've got one. <laughs> okay. Of four, uh, four letters. Four, four letters. Okay. Joe? Um, seven. Seven. Incredible news. Uh, Sean? Five. 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 Okay, Vic. What was your four? I've got five. It's mixed. <laughs> We've got to accept the four because you said four. All right then. Mild. <laughs> um, John? Mind. Mind. How are you spelling that? Ma -e -na -e -da. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, what have you got? I've got mind. Um, Joe, you're seven. Um, I've got unlined. Very, very good. 
Seven points to Joe. Skills. <laughs> uh, could they have done any better than that, Adam? Well, Vic, if he'd gone with mixed, could have had unmixed. <laughs> Can you unmix something? Yeah, if something has not been mixed, it's unmixed. <laughs> So at the end of that, Sean and Joe are in the lead with seven. Good start. <laughs> On to our first numbers round. OK, John, Vic, your turn to pick the numbers. Uh, ten, please. <laughs> I'll have one from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got to stop there. And uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Four more from the bottom and one from the top. One big one. Done. Right. <laughs> For the first Yay, round. Yay! You got a ten. We got a ten. A nine. Six. Two. Three. And the big one, 25. And the target, 461. OK, and your time starts now. So the target was uh, 461. John, did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Vic, did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Joe, did you get it? Uh, no, I got 460. 460. Okay, just one away. Sean, did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> How did you do? It? Right. It's a good opportunity to um, prove that I'm good at maths and plug this thing. Um, nine times twenty-five. Yeah, nine twenty-five is two two five. Yeah, no, that's where I went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I thought nine times twenty-five was four hundred and fifty, but it's not, is it? It's eighteen times twenty-five is four hundred and fifty. So Vic, uh, quick, help him out here. Come on. Well, ten times twenty-five. Ten twenty-five is two fifty. Yeah, add the nine. Two five nine. Minus two. <laughs> Minus two, two, five, seven. 257. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. I can't argue with that. <laughs> they can't take that can't argue that. <laughs> What's the number? <laughs> I mean, ideally, we were going for ah. 261. Ah, well, you see, I got it right originally, but the, the number changed. <laughs> John, no one's got it yet. Do you get it? I don't think so anymore. <laughs> 10 plus 9. 10 plus 9, 19. And then 25 minus uh, 3 plus 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 25 minus... Minus the 3, three then add the 2 to make 24. 24, yeah. Times them. Uh, 456. Oh yeah, you see, and then I thought I had a 5 left, but I've got a 6. So I had that one, and it's 462. 462. Joe, you can get the points with the 460, then. Um, 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 6 is 18. Times 25. 450. Plus 10. Yeah, great. One away. <laughs> so that's seven points to Joe and Sean. Was there a way of getting it, Rachel? Could it yeah, be done? Sean could have blacked his way through. If you start with nine times... I didn't times... want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to compromise the integrity of this product. Very honest. <laughs> <laughs> 925 is 225. Add the 10 for 235. Times it by 2 for 470. And then take away the 3 and the 6. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can see how you could do it that way, yeah. <laughs> Time now to go across the dictionary corner. Adam, what have you got for us? Hey, Jimmy. Uh, I'm going to take a trip to commentary corner uh, in which I. <laughs> read out a few genuine internet comments that I've come across on my travels. But that stray Y there, which is a shame. Or you could think about it as like a Spanish section, though. Comentar y corner. <laughs> Today, I'm going to uh, relate to you some comments that I've come across about printing. Now, I think that we can all agree 
that the invention of the printing press in the mid-1400s by Johann Gutenberg was probably one of the second millennium's biggest disappointments um, <laughs> on account of, like, all it could print was, like, words and pictures and shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but now, luckily, we've got 3D printing, and that's changed the whole ball game radically, and minds across the world are boggling with the implications of a technology which potentially enables you to create any actual three-dimensional object. Uh, as you will see when I read out some of these genuine comments, which I found beneath some YouTube videos. So let's begin with a thought-provoking one from Joel Tanko, who says, the 3D printer has changed the world. Mm. <laughs> and the world would be better than worst in the world. <laughs> Just take some time to think about that. <laughs> That's enough time. <laughs> uh, let's move on to a comment now from Chewbacca Wacker. <laughs> He is your go-to guy if you need your Wookiee assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> and he has this to say. He's one of a number of people that thinks <laughs> that this would be a great application for the 3D printer. I'm gonna print a printer and then return that printer and get my money. <laughs> In your face, 3D printing manufacturers, you bunch of dicks. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> Kevin Kukar, I'm not sure if that's a gas or an electric Kukar. <laughs> <laughs> he asks uh, this very important question, which a lot of people are asking online when it comes to 3D printing. Can this print out Hammonds? <laughs> That's, that's the big question, isn't it? Can, can this 3D printing technology enable you to actually print out a, a, a Hammond Beming? <laughs> and uh, if so, what, what kind of Hammond would you print? Um, well, Razug the 94th, 94th of the noble Razug clan, <laughs> has this suggestion. Can I print a whore? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I suppose the answer, though, is yes, you could, but what would be the point? You'd still have to pay them. Why not just visit a, an actual humming whore? Um, <laughs> but uh, Massif Oswald thinks even that would be a waste of money because he has this very specific idea. Print my cock! <laughs> Do you think he's using his cock to type? Because so the font <laughs> is it's going to capitals then back to he's alternating uppercase. He's alternating between his hand and his cock to yeah. actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Buxton. <laughs> the scores at the moment: uh, John and Vic have no points. Sean and Joe have 14. And here is your teaser. The words are a spank. The clue is give it a toss. That's a spank. <laughs> give it a toss. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. The answer to the teaser: the words were a spank. The clue was give it a toss. It was of course pancakes. <laughs> so Sean and Joe are in the lead. Uh, they've been playing in teams so far, but let's mix things up. Uh, this game is just for Sean and Vic. So Vic. Your turn to choose the letters. I'll take a vowel, please. June. <laughs> e. Uh, a consonant. M. Another consonant, please. N. And another consonant, please. R. Uh, a vowel. I. Consonant, please. T. Another consonant. F. And a vowel. O. And another consonant, please. And the last one, S. OK, so it's just for Sean and Vic. Your time starts now. Um, what have you got? <laughs> Vic, what do you think? 
Well, I mean, I don't think it's going to score any points, but it's a cracking word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just have that. Five. Five, you think? Yeah. Okay. What have you got, Sean? I'd like to declare a seven. <laughs> a seven, okay. Uh, Vic, can we hear your five? Frost. But I've got more to say about this. And frost. <laughs> um, and frost not in, sadly. But frost. Frost is good. Yeah, frost, okay. Yep. Sean. Informs. Very good. Informs. The seven-letter word, ladies and gentlemen. Very good. Sean Lock. I mean, this is. Uh, Adam, Susie, could they have done any better than the incredible informs? Well, get ready with the horn there, John, because you could have had NC form, which means sword-shaped. <laughs> Gets worse. Long, long and narrow, with sharp edges and a pointed tip. <laughs> OK, so at the end of that, John and Vic have no points. Sean and Joe have 21. <laughs> right, time now for Joe and John to go head-to-head. -head. Joe, your turn to pick the numbers. Uh, one from the top, please. And five from anywhere else. Thank you, Joe. One big one and five little ones. And this time around, they are five, three, eight, one. Another one and 25 again. And the target, 462. OK, just for John and Joe, your time starts now. So the target was 462. John, did you get it? Uh, 467, but I wouldn't be confident talking it through. Joe? I'm just um, picking I a number. I think I got 459. 459 could be something. That could be points. Talk us through it. 5 plus 1 is 6. 5 plus 1 is 6. Times 3. Times 3, 18. Times 25. Times 25 is 450. Uh, plus 1 plus 8. The other one and the 8 for 9 to add on. 459. Well done. Seven points to Joe and Sean. <laughs> Could it be done, Rachel? Um, I'm not sure. I'll have another look. What's mean? I'm not sure. It's your only job, Rachel. Let's <laughs> 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 maybe try and focus yeah. up a little bit here. Get back to me. All you, do, you need to do is an add, add three to what Joe did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd do in that situation. <laughs> found it. <laughs> you found it? Yeah. It's 462. <laughs> it was a difficult one. If you say 25... Minus 3 is 22. 1 plus 1 is 2. Times 8 is 16. Add 5 for 21. And 21 times 22 is 462. Woo! <laughs> OK, time to go across once more to Dictionary Corner. Adam, what have you got for us this time? Hello, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> now, I love words. And one of the things I love words is that you can use them to make amusing signs. I love amusing signs. <laughs> and I wanted to uh, share with you one that I saw when I went on a caravanning holiday with my family recently. Uh, we spent a couple of weeks in a, a lovely photographic studio. And, uh, <laughs> I, saw, uh, I saw this sign which uh, tickled me, which said, Don't come a knocking if the caravan's <laughs> rocking. <laughs> Then we all know what that means. Uh, it's pretty amusing stuff, and uh, I thought that would be good. We should get a sign like that. But we have children, so if we were ever to get to that stage, um, then most likely the caravan wouldn't actually be rocking. So I thought I should <laughs> customise the sign a little bit, come up with something uh, slightly different. And these are a few ideas that I had for the sign. Uh, first of all, I went with, don't start banging if you can hear banging. <laughs> I thought that was a little bit coarse and um, maybe overstating things a little bit. So uh, my next attempt was, uh, don't attempt to negotiate <laughs> access <laughs> while I am. <laughs> uh, 
But then I thought, nah, that, get, get, you're losing something of the, the poetry of the original, don't come a-knocking if the caravan's rocking. So I went for another rhyming option and had, if you can detect vibrations, we may be having relations. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, um, I thought I'd go for something a little more uh, straightforward. If you knock and no one answers, we're having sexual intercourse. So the scores at the moment, uh, John and Vic have no points. Sean and Joe have 28. And here is your teaser. The words are twat heard. The clue is that'll stop him. That's twat heard. That'll stop him. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. The answer to the teaser. The words were twat heard. The clue was that'll stop him. It was, of course, thwarted. <laughs> OK, before we go on, Joe Wilkinson's on holiday, but he has sent his half-brother, Fabio, with a postcard for Rachel. Fabio? Mm. Oh, right. Thanks. <laughs> Rachel, would you like to read the postcard sure, from Joe? Sure, Dear Rachel, I can't make it because I'm still on holiday, but this week, because I ran out of money, I'm staying at my local home base. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this week I thought Sean and John could do with some help because they're both dog shit at Countdown. <laughs> so I've sent along some extra teammates for them. Jimmy's got the details. Wish you were here. By that I mean I wish Susie was here. <laughs> the rest of you can piss right off. Joe, P.S. Tell Jimmy he's a gonad. <laughs> OK, well, as you've just heard, you're going to get new teammates. Uh, let's meet the players. <laughs> okay, it's uh, Rob and Jono. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about them. Uh, Jono is an eight-time countdown champion. He's an octo champ. Woo! <laughs> Uh, Rob Beckett is a stand-up comedian and the worst ever Cats Does Countdown player, which means he's the worst ever player of Countdown ever. <laughs> he also seems to be dressed from the neck down as a lesbian. <laughs> Are you sure it's from the neck or just from the forehead down? <laughs> Actually, the hair as well. Yeah, you just... <laughs> I'll give you some stats on these boys. OK. The Octo Champ has won eight games. Rob has won none. <laughs> Octo Champ's longest ever word was desolated. Rob's was the word pubes. <laughs> spelt with a Z. <laughs> Urban, innit? Yeah. <laughs> You're moving on, Jim. It's the future now, yeah? Can't yeah. spell it like the old ways. Shakespeare didn't listen to anyone, did he, about words? He started knocking out new ones. <laughs> yeah, you're like the new Shakespeare. <laughs> okay. See what he used to wear? Like a right state. <laughs> OK, now, John, you're trailing horribly today. It's uh, uh, zero to you, 28 to Sean. Um, who are you going to pick? I think I know the answer to this. Well... I believe in changing destinies, Jimmy. I believe in new chances. And if it's all right with Vic, I would like Rob. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that feels like a funny thing to say, but a terrible decision. Are you sure you want to go for Rob? Because you want to come back and win this, presumably. I'm confident that Rob is the man. Oh. I think he's been playing a long game. I'm confident he is a man. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, John, you get Rob, and Sean, you get Jono. Um, so, Jono, how did you get so good at Countdown? Oh, uh, you know, a lot of practice. Four hours a day. You do four hours a day? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, but... When well, you were a teenager. Yeah. Uh, Sean, how do you think you're going to get on with the Octo Champ? Don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, obviously, you know, it's a done deal now, isn't it? Yeah. Can I just point out that his joke teeth are smaller than my real ones? <laughs> <laughs> Can we just hold those up next to his real ones? Where are you looking? <laughs> <laughs> Take him out and try it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, on with the game. Sean, Joe, Jono, uh, you get to choose the letters. I'm not going to play, because we've got Jono. I'm going to do a Jackson Pollock-type painting using my condiments. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely idea. <laughs> OK, Jono, pick some letters. 
Val. Thank you, Johnny. Please. E. Another Val, please. A. Another one. U. A consonant, please. P. Con oh. P. P. <laughs> consonant. T. Consonant. D. Consonant. M. Uh, vowel, please. A. And could I have a final consonant, please? <laughs> D. OK, and your time starts now. Seven. Seven. Joe? Six. Six? Sean? I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, John? Seven. Vic? Six. And Rob? Um, four. <laughs> Stick to what you know. Stick to what you know. What, what's your four? Made. <laughs> uh, Vic, your six? Tamped. <laughs> Susie's just double checking, but I'm pretty sure that's a word. Yeah, that's great. It's, uh, yeah, yeah or a good. bit of metal. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you're six. Uh, no, I just realised I've actually had cocked it up. I had patted, but there's only one T. I, Jono. Um, updated. <laughs> uh, John, can you match the update, Joe? I got updated as well, Jimmy. Can I have a look and see that you weren't? Yes, you've written down updated. Look how quickly that was written. <laughs> <laughs> so seven points for both teams. Susie, could they have done any better? Uh, Susie also had adapted, but that's still eight. Seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good on the maths, are you? Not really. <laughs> OK, so at the end of that, Sean, Joe and Jono are in the lead with 35 points. <laughs> On to another numbers round. OK, John, Vic and Rob, you want to beat the numbers? I'll just declare at this moment, um, I frequently I fail at the numbers. It's the weakest part of my game, so I'm not going to do numbers this time. Instead, I'm going to try and achieve a world record. Oh, and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get, in 30 seconds, the world's biggest ice cream headache. <laughs> Look at the size of that flake. Four. Um... <laughs> OK, well, I think the numbers. Four big ones. <laughs> Four big ones. Two little ones. <laughs> Come on, Sean. Get it down, yeah? <laughs> We've got nine sure. <laughs> and five. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got 50, 75, 25, oh, 100. Yeah. Come wow. on, Sean. And the target, 476. OK, and your time starts now. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Sean. Oh. <laughs> Sean, quick. Shit. <laughs> Jesus. That one's colder. Oh, oh, We got, I, got, we got I can't believe what's just happened. What, okay. 475? Four, I know it's not exactly right, but near enough, isn't it? <laughs> what did you get? 475 is the first time ever in history that I've actually added anything up to yeah. it. Go, Jono. Did you get it? Uh, 475. It's hard to concentrate over a right. 475. <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> Have I got the same as the Octo Champ? <laughs> Uh, how are you, Sean? Just checking in. I got... Oh! <laughs> so, what was that? Well, actually, it's been quite interesting, the results of this experiment. You can't give yourself an ice cream headache. I couldn't get one. Well, thank you, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, what did you get? I think I got 476. OK, talk me through your workings. Uh, 75 over 25 is 3. 75 over 25, yep, 3. Away from the 100 is 97. It is. Times by 5. Times by 5 is 485. And take away the 9. Perfect.
I think, the, I think the, the larger part of this, well done, John, but the two mother morons <laughs> have actually got within one point yeah. of the final answer. You don't realise what a big deal it is for people like us. Yeah. <laughs> Just talk me through how, how did you do it out of interest? 100 times 5? Five? 500. Minus 25. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's what you would like us to celebrate. 100 times 5. You can only five. beat the puzzle that's in front of you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the comeback is on. John, Vic and Rob have 17. Sean, Joe and Jono are in the lead with 35. Here is your teaser. The words are dear nuts, and the clue is keep them in your mouth. That's dear nuts, <laughs> keep them in your mouth. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. The answer to the teaser, the words were dear nuts, the clue was keep them in your mouth. It was, of course, dentures. <laughs> OK, time for our final letters game. John, your turn to choose the letters. Hello, Rachel. Hello, John. Can I have a consonant, please? Of course. You can have an S. Yeah. Uh, and a vowel, please. O. Consonant, please. D. <laughs> <laughs> Doos. <laughs> vowel, please. I. Consonant, please. G. Vowel, please. E. Consonant, please. S. What was Vowel. the last one? S. Please. That squiggles an S, yeah. O. <laughs> and a consonant, please. And the last one. W. OK, and your time starts now. Six, but I think it's almost definitely wrong. Have you got a six? Yeah, but I think it's not. It's not a word, mate. No, that's no. not right at no. all. No, that's, <laughs> right. that's, that's very right. wrong. <laughs> what have you got, Vic? Nothing. <laughs> uh, John, what have you got? I'll try a seven. Sean, what have you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight letter words. Uh, Joe. Uh, six. Jono. Seven. Rob, what's your six? Um, gooses. <laughs> as soon as I wrote it down, the clock stop, I went, oh, geese. <laughs> <laughs> I've got gooses as well, though, and I think that's right. Yes, yeah, it's OK, you can goose someone. Is it, have I got six? You have. Rob Beckett, yeah. six. <laughs> OK, Vic, what did you get? Woodies. Uh, woodies, can you have woodies? Yeah, in that sense. It's in the it... dictionary. <laughs> I mean, that's a collection of them together, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, what's your seven? Uh, goodies. Very nice. Goodies. Yeah. Goodies, goodies and woodies. John, are your seven? Uh, goodies as well. Goodies <coughs> as well? Okay. Fucking copycat. <laughs> <laughs> sure, can you beat the Octochamp with your eight? Yeah, disowed. Dis disowed. Disowed. <laughs> Dis <laughs> do you use it in a sentence? Well, um, <laughs> I disowed that jumper. That, that, uh, How many times are you using the, the D? No, no, it, it, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's two O's. <laughs> uh, double D's. <laughs> so, seven points for both teams. <laughs> Adam, Susie, could they have done any better? Uh, no, goodies and woodies we had. I had a woody. Susie had a goody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Just... <laughs> OK, John, Vic and Rob have 24. Sean, Joe and John have 42. <laughs> right. Fingers on buzzers. It's time for today's countdown conundrum. The time starts now. <laughs> Flamingos. Oh, you take the pigs. Is that right? <laughs> Sorry, did you just get that in one second? <laughs> yeah. What, what? <laughs> Let's see if he's right. <laughs> one second. I mean, I don't want to. No one wants to have a go at you, Jono. You know, you won this eight times, but it's a bit flash, isn't it? 
Sorry, mate. <laughs> OK, so the final scores are John, Vic and Rob have 24 points, but tonight's winners with 52, Sean, Joe and John O. <laughs> I don't. I really don't want to make a fool of myself on those drums. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Something very important to me. Dignity is something in comedy that's always been very essential to my work. <laughs> I don't want to compromise that. You know, even though I have won a drum kit. Okay. That said, there's a little bit of mustard leaking out your nipple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, congratulations. You're now the proud owner of the Countdown Drum Kit. Thanks to all our panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it for us. Good night. So you love the Gogglers. Don't worry, they're back next Friday at 9 with all of their fabulous musings. But next up, Dan Aykroyd's in the house and Kate Hudson. It's Chatty Man.